Throw that in those two young ones. Very well camouflaged kudu. They all stand really still. That's sort of, I guess for any animal really, humans included, the first rule of camouflage is not moving. As you know, the human eye and the same with animals, you pick up movement much faster, especially on the peripheral vision. Just the way it's all set up, I guess, sort of our brains relative to the to the eyes. Trying to, to pick any movement or change in shapes around. Calves, I can see there are two females, probably their mothers close to us here as well, four of them. Five, six, seven, eight, two. Once you start looking, suddenly you see a whole lot of kudu. A little bit forward, Alex. Here's one of the adult females. I didn't even see her until she moved. She was closest to us of all the kudus here. Well, is this our herd? The group that I've seen them, my memory is a bit rusty. To see the other side of that youngster with this. No, maybe not. When they come out, I think it's a Kudu. We call Kudex. The X on the side. Yeah. When she comes out a bit more, we'll see. The one on the left side, the two. Certainly growing up. So the youngster last year, if it is the same one. Can't promise, but it certainly looks like it. Yeah, I'd say it is. Alex, you remember those kudus? Yeah. See, yeah, there's the adult in the back, and I remember one of the adults had a similar mark, but this is almost certainly that one. Actually, let me get a little snap of it. Just for memory's sake. Busy browsing. Kud X. Kudu X. As you can see from what they're eating, its pickings are getting a bit slim now. Kudu is that prefer to yellowed bush willow leaves. It's not the most palatable of leaves at, at any stage of the year. Even when it's when it's green. You very seldom see kudu eating these leaves during during the summer months. But it do choose you when there's not too much around. Just another look it's beautiful with that bit of colour around her face. Go more and more now the bushbuck and the nyala also coming into our camp obviously because of a bit more water around camp and, and other animals not coming in there there's more food around so they're coming right in there now to come and pick at the the green leaves see that kudu as she's moving along look at how she's using her ears all the time not just visual but also using the order of these senses to great effect really making sure that she's checking out what's ahead of her by listening as well Great big ears, fantastic hearing for these antelope. Important, of course, we mentioned earlier with those elephants that um, summertime you'd never be able to spot them that far away. Now, kudus are browsers, they prefer, generally speaking, they eat mostly leaves. And that, of course, keeps them mostly in very thick, lush habitats. So, even though they've got very good um, eyesight, for them to be able to, to pick up predators or pick up threats before they can see it. In other words, either by smelling or by hearing it, it's very important. Hence, very good hearing. Yes. Stunning antelope. Huh? Just look at how beautiful and graceful they move as well. Always love that about kudu. Oh, 
our little one. <laughs> Big brown eyes having a look at us. Gorgeous. A few more following. Like I said, it's amazing how these antelope really blend in. Let's go a little bit forward. One little one behind there. Still got that curious look of youngster. Hadn't sat many cars before and actually wouldn't be surprised if this little one maybe even hasn't seen us before. Like I said, I don't remember seeing this herd recently. So again, we are a little bit different speaking about here. Look at those ears pointing straight to us. Good hearing. You can imagine to that little kudu, the buzzing coming from this vehicle. Very different. It's not used to hearing it from other game drive vehicles. I'm sure that adds into the, the curiosity. Still brought away there again eating bush willow leaves. Like I said, they're not, oh, it's not too bad, but the large fruited bush willow, less popular with them. They actually have leaves more often, slightly smaller, slightly more succulent leaves there. Combritum apiculatum, actually named after leaf. Alrighty. Look here out of curiosity, sir, and, and, and like I mentioned, that Codex that we often spoke about before, and I'm sure it is now. I'm quite curious, I think this might be a mother. Again, this is not fact, it's purely speculation. But it would be interesting to know. Look at that female. Got not quite as clear a marking, but a very similar mark on the side. Now also look at the youngster following her, the little calf behind. Again, not a cross there, but look at the stripe. That same one, the sort of first one behind the shoulder blade. In this case, it's not quite a cross, but it's fused. Again, it's not, you know, it's not unheard of, but it's not typical that the stripes do that with kudu. Normally, it's a single stripe. So, it would actually be interesting to know if there's a, a certain genetic relevance to the stripe. The same as it goes for you know, a leopard with big dark spots as opposed to a lighter leopard or a darker leopard. I'm sure there must be some genetic sort of lineage there if you want. A little one learning from mother. Following mum along. Mum's eating these leaves so it means it's good for me to eat and in that process young animals learn how to operate and what to eat and what to do and also socially that's how they learn. Copying her and copying others in the group. Sort of how we do it as well. Oh, should we wait for them? Give them some privacy. Look at that beautiful white tail. But often the tail will fluff up when they're running away, but in this case she's stopping for a defecating. Stunning, stunning antelope. I love Kudu. One of my favorites.